Hey, how's it going, guys? Today's topic, I want to discuss mastering Roth IRA conversions. And in particular, with this video, I'm going to have a few part video series specifically regarding the intricacies of a Roth IRA conversion and how that could really benefit your situation or whether or not you know it's something you should not do. But in particular, this video is going to go over the tax implications of doing a Roth IRA conversion. What's the difference between the traditional IRA? What happens when you convert it into the Roth? How does that affect you from a tax level? Uh, what sort of marginal tax rate do you have to pay now? How much of your bucket of your marginal tax rate do you have to fill up? And pretty much everything in between. It really comes down to, regarding Roth conversions, what's the problem that you currently have right now? And then how is a Roth conversion going to help solve your problem? That's the different things that we want to make sure to dissect and say, okay, by making this adjustment now, this is how you're going to have significantly more money in your pocket or significantly more flexibility when it comes time for retirement. The downside with saving money into traditional IRA accounts that a lot of individuals don't realize, if they have a million dollar, two million dollar IRA bucket that's basically sitting there, they'll think that that's added on to their net worth, which calculation wise, that, that does make you know, mathematical sense. When you look at it further, it's not truly your net worth because you're not really netting that amount that's sitting in the IRA account. What do I mean by that? Anybody that has money in an IRA, they have a partner that is subject to take monies from that IRA account. And that partner is Uncle Sam, is the IRS. So if somebody has a million dollar IRA and they're sitting at a, let's call it a hypothetical 30% tax rate, 30% of that money is Uncle Sam's. So if there's ways that you could give the least amount of money, pay the least amount of money in taxes, and hoard the most amount of money in tax-free growth and tax-free income, that could put you on a much better trajectory, a much better uh, ideal retirement situation. So you could live every single day with confidence throughout your retirement, knowing that there's no way to get around the IRS. There's no way to, to avoid that taxation. But how can you make sure that you're taking advantage of your current scenario or your future scenario to do incremental Roth conversions? So at any point in time, if you have specific questions and you want to have access to your free Roth IRA conversion analysis, which I'll talk about throughout the course of this video, simply call our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-566-1002. Reference this video, ask to speak to a specialist, and we'll make sure that we'll get you all set up uh, to try to customize a report you know, specific to your exact situation. So from a high level, I want you to dissect the difference between a traditional IRA versus a Roth IRA account and think of them like buckets. With a traditional IRA, all pre-tax traditional IRA monies, if you're making contributions into that account, those monies are tax deductible, meaning if I make $100,000 and I put $5,000 into an IRA account, traditional pre-tax IRA account, my adjusted gross income would be $95,000 in that example. That's a tax deduction. The monies that go into that IRA in that example would be $5,000, so that's now being added to that bucket. It's growing tax deferred based on the different investment options that I'm choosing that's helping grow the account. And then when it comes time for retirement, when somebody's above the age of 59 and a half and they now want to start taking withdrawals or distributions from that IRA account, it's going to be fully taxable. So in years when, let's say, your income is very large and you want to try to get as many tax deductions as possible, that may be a really good avenue for an individual. The downside is you're basically kicking that, that tax can down the road where that IRA bucket is nice and fat. The longer that you're putting contributions into it, the longer that it's accumulating with the power of compound interest, you have this nice fat bucket that's sitting there. So any dollar you're pulling out in the future is going to be fully taxable. When those monies are fully taxable, 
you also have different areas that are being affected or could potentially be affected, such as social security tax and also IRMA tax, which is a additional uh, premium or additional cost that you could potentially pay for Medicare Part B and Part D premiums, known as an increase in modified adjusted gross income. So if we look at the opposite side of the coin, how does a Roth IRA work? A Roth IRA, if somebody's eligible to place monies into a Roth IRA account, any dollar that they're placing into that account is not tax deductible, but the money grows tax-free in that account and then when it comes time to take a qualified distribution from that account, you could pull out all of those monies uh, tax-free. So you'll have tax-free withdrawals and those withdrawals that you're pulling out to spend for your different retirement expenses can be utilized in a tax-free manner and not mess with your modified adjusted gross income that will therefore not affect the calculation for potential social security tax and not affect your potential IRMA tax, the Medicare Part B, or, or uh, basically the, the IRMA penalty, the Medicare Part B uh, increased premiums or Medicare Part D increased premiums. So when somebody makes too much money or the contributions that are eligible to go into a Roth each year are so minimal, any individual can place their money, could take dollars from their IRA, and they could leverage Roth conversions. By converting those monies, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, my IRA was going to be subject to tax when I was going to start taking withdrawals after 59 and a half. Even if I'm not 59 and a half yet, if I take this portion of dollars from my IRA and I place it now into the Roth, I'm now eligible or I'm now... Uh, subject to pay that tax when I'm making that conversion. So once again, we're going to use the $100,000 example. Let's say if I make $100,000 in a given year and I put $5,000 into my IRA, what happens? Well, my adjusted gross income is going to be $95,000. That $5,000 is being contributed to the IRA. So that's one side. Let's say if instead of placing into the IRA, I take $5,000 and I put into a Roth IRA. If I make $100,000 and I put $5,000 into a Roth IRA, it's going to show my adjusted gross income to be $100,000. Nothing changes there. So that's the second. That's the secondary aspect, traditional IRA versus Roth IRA. So I hope you understand those, those two concepts. A conversion, let's say if you have a bucket of or a value of $100,000 sitting in your traditional IRA and you decide, I want to take this full amount and I want to convert it into my Roth IRA account. I make too much money. I cannot contribute money into a Roth IRA account, but I want to leverage the conversion because I understand in the future, my tax rate may be higher. It might be that I have significantly more assets saved that I want to lower and create a proper tax allocation strategy to make sure as I'm pulling out these monies in the future, it's gonna to come to me tax-free. So in that example, if you have a $100,000 traditional IRA and you convert the whole thing to a Roth IRA, it's now going to show as if you made an additional $100,000 that year. So this is why it would make sense to calculate and leverage something known as incremental Roth IRA conversions. You're doing it incrementally. Maybe instead of doing $100,000 in one year, if you want to stay within certain marginal tax rates, which I'll explain on the next screen, you might want to say, okay, I'll leverage $20,000 conversions for the next five years so that with all things being equal, my $100,000 IRA will eventually be 100% into our $100,000 uh, Roth IRA that's been converted. So there's restrictions when somebody makes contributions to a Roth IRA. There are no restrictions when somebody uh, tries to convert their traditional IRA into a Roth IRA. But you want to make sure to avoid those landmines and you're avoiding the most common mistakes. So I hope that this makes sense. What do I mean by tax rates when somebody's collecting gross income versus adjusted gross income versus taxable income? And how does that translate to the different tax rates available? So I promise you, this is going to be one of the most important charts that you could read. 
and understand because it doesn't just have to do with Roth conversions. I'll show how Roth conversions come into play with this, but this will also help you understand how marginal tax rates work and how taxes in general work. I'm going to keep it somewhat interesting, but it's definitely going to be technical in the same breath. So what generally happens is an individual has gross income. That's the income that they're making throughout the year. If they own a business, if they have W-2 income, whatever that is, that's their gross income. The difference between gross income and adjusted gross income is something known as above line deductions. So when I use the example and I said, if I make $100,000 in a given year and I put $5,000 into my IRA, which is a pre-tax IRA, a deductible IRA, that means that that difference, that 5,000 that I placed into that pre-tax qualified account reduced my gross income. So it now layers down to my AGI, my adjusted gross income being 95,000 in that example. If I had no above the line deductions, then my gross income and my adjusted gross income are going to be identical. So I hope that that makes sense. What you'll notice is right next to adjusted gross income is something known as modified adjusted gross income. I'll, I'll get back to that, but just I want to teeter down the scale. So we understand gross income minus above line deductions equals your adjusted gross income, your AGI. If let's say you don't have itemized deductions and you have to go with the common standard deduction, which the Tax Cut and Jobs Act increased the standard deduction for families. Excellent. It also decreased the marginal tax rates. Excellent. That helped out. The problem that's occurring is if Congress does not change anything, that Tax Cut and Jobs Act is going to sunset on December 31st of 2025. So these numbers that I'm showing you, this is for 2024 numbers, but be mindful that it could be adjusted with different inflation and different things. And based on what Congress does from now until December 31st of 2025, you might be going back to the old rates. But we understand gross income minus above line deductions equals adjusted gross income minus the standard deduction equals what your taxable income is. So that's the income that is uh, calculated on what marginal tax rate you have to pay. So if let's say you go and somebody has adjusted gross income of 100,000 and they have a standard deduction of 20,000, just as a hypothetical example, their taxable income is going to be $80,000 in that example. It's adjusted gross income minus the standard deduction, whichever is higher, itemized deduction or standard deduction, that's what you're going to use when you're filing your taxes and that's how you get to the taxable income amount. If we stay on that example that somebody's taxable income is 80,000, how does that work in conjunction with the charts below that? And these charts, the numbers that it's showing is for a married couple. So if you're looking at this saying, I'm single, you know, this numbers look off. These are for married couple for the 2024 tax year. What happens is the first 23,200 that you make as a married couple is going to be taxed at the 10% bracket, at the 10% rate. The next, we'll call it, you know, 56,000 and change to get up to that $80,000 amount, that's going to be sitting at the 12% bracket. So if we look at this, we notice that from dollar zero to dollar 23,200, that's going to be taxed at 10%. From the next 23,201 to 94,300, that's going to be taxed at 12%. If you make more than 94,300, if your taxable income is showing more than 94,300, then you're going to spill over into the 22% bracket. That's important to note because if we're trying to leverage Roth conversions and we understand what your taxable income is, well, it might make sense to only fill up the 12% bracket. Or if we teeter down these scales, and we understand a larger jump might be 24% to 32% bracket, we might want to only fill up what that 24% bracket is. Because if we tilt over into the 32% bracket, as an example, and you're converting large bulks of Roth conversions, those extra dollars are now going to be taxed at that 32% rate and possibly into the 35 and possibly into the 37% rate. 
So I hope that this makes sense. If we're looking at it, somebody has taxable income of $80,000 after the gross income, after the adjusted gross income, after the standard deduction, their taxable income as a couple is sitting at 80,000. We understand that a portion of their dollars is gonna be taxed at 10%. The next portion of their dollars is gonna be taxed at 12%. In that example, we have, it's $80,000. We still have $14,300 that you could use up in a Roth conversion to stay within that 12% bracket before it gets tilted over into the 22% rate. So these little upscales of charts, be mindful that if you don't want to have large jumps, maybe only fill up the 12% bracket, or maybe only fill up the 24% bracket, or maybe only fill up the 35% bracket. So those are these little rule of thumbs to make sure that if you're converting too many dollars, anytime you do a conversion, that's going to increase your taxable income. So as an example, if I had if I made $80,000 in a given year, but then I did a conversion of 100,000, well now it just spilled me over into the 22% bracket and anything that I'm making above 94,300 that that's showing as part of that conversion, everything above that line is now going to be taxed at the 22% rate. So I might want to incrementally do that conversion or maybe 22% is not that bad and you wanna fill up the 22% uh, bracket before you spill over into the 24% bracket. So that all that makes sense. And let's go with another example. Let's say that somebody's making uh, $250,000 in a given year. If they're making 250,000, well, we understand that they're gonna have a portion of dollars taxed at 10%, a portion of dollars taxed at 12%, a portion of dollars taxed at 22%, and then they're going to have roughly about 49, 48,000 that's gonna be sitting at the 24% bracket. If they wanna to try to fill up their bracket, well then, and there's, they have 250,000 of taxable income, and they wanna stay within that 24% bracket, well then we understand that they have that spacing of about 133,900 that they can do of conversion monies incrementally to stay within that 24% bracket. And you could play with this a, a few different ways. You could play with this with multiple different examples. And this is what we're doing behind the scenes to make sure you're not shooting yourself in the foot. You don't see this nice, beautiful $1 million IRA. And you say, I gotta go and convert the entire thing, but I'm gonna do this blindly. No, no, you want to make sure that you're doing incremental Roth conversions, you're doing it the proper way, and you're figuring out what are my tax rates or my, what are my projected tax rates going to be or what is my income going to be throughout retirement to make sure I could cover my expenses and if that number is you know higher than what the tax rates are right now it could make pure mathematical sense to leverage that roth conversion there's a lot of different benefits between roth conversions one of them obviously being tax-free income and then also how it has the effect on modified adjusted gross income but just for simplicity purposes you could try to leverage something known as a tax equilibrium if rates are going to be lower in the future, well, then it might not make sense to do the Roth conversion now. If rates are higher in the future, well, then you probably want to hoard more dollars in Roth conversions now than in the future. Maybe somebody that has variable income and they work off of commissions or their business is not doing so well this year. Well, maybe that could allow you to convert more dollars to fill up those brackets and you could do it at a variable rate or a Roth conversion cost averaging strategy where you're doing it incrementally multiple months throughout the course of the year as opposed to one lump sum chunk at, at a given time. So there's so many different nuances with this, but I just want you to understand how the 10% fills over into the 12%, which fills over into the 22, which fills over to the 24, which fills over to the 32, which fills over to the 35, and then you max that on a federal rate, that 37% bracket. Now understand, based on whatever state you're in, you could also have another upwards of 10% in taxes uh, by doing these conversions. So you wanna be very careful and make sure that you're at least you know, taking advantage of the Roth conversion analysis that we do for individuals that, that call into the agency. If we just briefly stay on this chart where it shows modified adjusted gross income, what is the difference between that and adjusted gross income and why is that important, especially as somebody's nearing retirement? Modified adjusted gross income, use the example of tax-free muni bonds. Municipal bonds are federally tax-free. So an effective strategy is for retirees to collect interest from those tax-free muni bonds and say, okay, I'm going to uh, live off the interest. That's going to be a portion of my income, and that's excellent. So 
from an adjusted gross income standpoint, it's not included in the AGI, but from a modified adjusted gross income, it is. Why is that important for retirees? Well, majority of individuals are going to be leveraging something known as Social Security income. When somebody uses Social Security income, the way on how the government looks at how your Social Security is taxed or what is your benefit that is eligible for taxation, they're going to look at your modified adjusted gross income. They're not going to look at your adjusted gross income. The same with IRMA tax, which is a uh, really think of it like a penalty or an extra premium when somebody is eligible for or they have Medicare Part B and Part D premiums. If their income is too high, if their modified adjusted gross income is too high, it's going to now make them pay a higher premium uh, in addition per month for that Medicare Part B and Part D. So those are really two main areas, two main negatives uh, when we were looking at the difference between modified adjusted gross income versus adjusted gross income, uh, when somebody's thinking that they're leveraging a tax-free benefit, and really, you know, the modified adjusted gross income is still calculating that tax-free benefit, such as the municipal bond interest. What does MAGI or modified adjusted gross income, what does that look like when you're leveraging Roth IRA accounts? When you're taking out qualified distributions from a Roth IRA account. This means, let's say you converted dollars, the monies are growing tax-free, you're pulling those dollars out tax-free. How does that affect the modified adjusted gross income? And it doesn't. So you could be, if you play your cards the correct way, and you're taking out withdrawals from Roth IRA accounts in the future, you could have a very small modified adjusted gross income so when you're looking at how much of your Social Security benefit is taxable, you could be sitting at 0% of that benefit could be taxable. So the way on how Social Security taxation works is you could either your benefit could either be taxed at 0%, 50%, or 85% based on what your provisional income calculation. I have a very detailed video on that, so I definitely recommend to watch that. Um, but you know, just be mindful that you don't want to hoard too many dollars in the wrong area. Another example would be NIIT is a net, invested, uh, net investment uh, income tax, where you could be charged an additional 3.8% of net investment income uh, could be taxed at an additional 3.8% if you're over specific thresholds. So when you're looking at these conversions and you're doing it incrementally, it's not just about increasing or trying to fill up your buckets, but you also want to make sure that you're still having access to the proper credits and you're not shooting yourself in the foot. And you want to look at it on a case by case basis, a year by year basis, and make sure that there's some sort of strategy in mind. Individuals could do it themselves, which is fine, or they could ask for help. And that's where we have an entire division that helps out individuals that call over to our agency. What do I mean by that? So once again, what is the problem that you're trying to solve and how can a Roth conversion help out your situation? And it comes down to understanding that you're always going to have a partner with your IRA account, with your assets. And that partner is Uncle Sam. So if you want to create some sort of tax insurance and understand and take advantage of the current tax rates right now, or take advantage of your specific situation to make sure that you're paying the least amount of money possible to Uncle Sam, the IRS, that's where a Roth conversion may make sense. There's also many times that it doesn't make sense. If you're making too much money right now and your buckets are maxed out and you're in these really high thresholds, but then when we fast forward at, we do projections off of what your retirement income and your retirement situation is going to be like, if that's significantly less, it might not make sense to do the conversion. So that's where we put together an entire division that does Roth conversion analysis for individuals. How you have access to this free Roth conversion analysis report and be able to speak with one of our specialists is one of three ways. One, calling the 1-800 number, 1-800-566-1002. Say, reference this video. I looked up this, uh, you know, I saw this video online about mastering Roth conversions. I want to... I uh, set up a time to speak to somebody regarding my free Roth conversion analysis. Excellent. The other thing is I'm going to have a calendar link embedded in the description of this video. You click on that link, you can set up a time 
that is you know customized specifically for your calendar and we'll make sure that we have and just basically make the note of it of what you want to uh you know speak about on that video what are some of your most pressing concerns or in that in that meeting and we'll make sure that somebody reaches out to you either by phone or via zoom whatever you're most comfortable with and then or lastly going directly to afasifinancial.com where you'll be able to schedule an appointment directly through the website one of the really neat so i hope that all three of those make sense uh, that's one of the gifts that we're doing for individuals that call in that have seen this video. Please make sure to also comment on this video, ask any questions, and I'll try to get back to your questions the best way possible and as detailed as possible. The other thing is when you're clicking on our website, afasifinancial.com, what we did was we put together a new retirement quiz. So for the individual that's maybe not sure whether or not a Roth conversion makes sense for them, or they're just kind of stuck based on however old they are, based on how, how close they are or, or far away they are from retirement, and they just want to have some sort of roadmap and some sort of customized report to figure out what their problem areas are, that's where I would recommend that you click on our retirement quiz. So when you go to our website, it's going to say take our quiz, you'll click on that, put in your information, and then you'll have a um, a specialized report, a personalized report will get spit over to you and will be emailed directly to you. And then you could also mark whether or not you want somebody to speak with you regarding that report. But really those two things are very valuable regarding this, uh, you know, this video content. And I recommend to take advantage of that. Um, this is really what, you know, some of the different things take the gap quiz. That's what it will look like. Uh, but really, at the end of the day, I hope that you learned a lot, of, a ton of things regarding Roth conversions. I'm going to have a whole different slew of really the five to 10 most pressing questions of uh, Roth IRA conversions. This really went over in detail the taxation, how all that works. But you could really reference this video in a, a few different ways uh, regarding, you know, as you're progressing throughout your working career, as you start nearing your retirement, as you're progressing throughout your retirement. So definitely watch this a few times over. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Retire Sharp, so you get access to the most updated videos. Thanks so much, guys.